In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the indefinite integral using trigonometric substitution. Now, there's three forms that you need to be familiar with. The first one is the square root of a squared minus x squared. The second one you want to look for is a squared plus x squared inside a, a square root function. And the last one, the square root of x squared minus a squared. Now for the first one, you need to substitute x with a sine theta, where a is a constant. And the reason for that is because 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. For the second one, replace x with a tangent theta. And the reason for that is 1 plus tan squared is secant squared. And for the last one, replace x with a secant theta because 1 secant squared minus 1 is tangent squared. Now these are the three forms that you need to look out for when using trigonometric substitution. So let's work on an example problem. Let's say if we have the square root of 4 minus x squared divided by x squared. How can we integrate this function? So notice that we have the form square root a squared minus x squared. So we can clearly see that a squared is 4, which means that a is equal to the square root of 4, or 2. Therefore, we need to replace x with a sine theta. In this case, x has to be 2 sine theta. So dx is going to be the derivative of 2 sine theta. So that's 2 cosine theta d theta. And so now we're going to have the integral of 4 minus, let's replace x with 2 sine theta. So this is going to be 2 sine theta squared, and then divided by x squared, which is also 2 sine theta squared. Now let's replace dx with 2 cosine theta d theta. We can get rid of this for now. So now we got to do some math. So let's perform some algebra techniques to simplify this expression. 2 squared is 4. So 2 sine squared is going to be 4 sine squared theta. And on the bottom, we're also going to have 4 sine squared theta. Now, what do you think we need to do at this point? At this point, we need to take out a 4 inside the square root. So we can get 1 minus sine squared. So we're going to have the square root of 4 times 1 minus sine squared theta. Now, something else that we can do is that we can cancel 2. 2 over 4 reduces to 1 over 2. So there's going to be a 2 left over on the bottom. And we still have cosine theta d theta. Now we can take the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. And then we can replace 1 minus sine squared with cosine squared. So the cosine squared part is still inside the square root symbol. So now at this point, we can cancel 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And the square root of cosine squared is cosine theta. So we have cosine, and this is supposed to be sine squared. Cosine over sine squared times cosine theta d theta. And cosine times cosine is cosine squared. Now what do you think we should do at this point? The best thing I recommend doing at this point is to replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared because sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. Now at this point, we can split the fraction into two fractions. So we could divide 1 by sine squared and we can divide sine squared 
by itself. Now you need to be familiar with the reciprocal identities in trig. 1 over sine is cosecant. So 1 over sine squared is cosecant squared. And sine squared divided by sine squared is 1. So this is what we now have. Now what is the antiderivative of cosecant squared? The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So the antiderivative of negative cosecant squared is cotangent. So the antiderivative of positive cosecant squared is negative cotangent. And the antiderivative of negative 1 d theta is going to be negative theta, and then plus c. Now this is the answer. It's the integral, but not with the appropriate variables. Because we started with an x variable, and now we have to change theta back into an x variable. So how can we do that? Now recall we said that x is equal to 2 sine theta. So if we divide both sides by 2, sine theta is x over 2. So we can make a right triangle. Now you need to be familiar with the principles of Sokotoa. The so part of Sokotoa tells us that sine theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So let's place the angle theta here. So opposite to theta is x, that's on top, divided by the hypotenuse, so the hypotenuse is 2. Now we've got to find a missing side. So whenever you have a right triangle, you can use the Pythagorean theorem. c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. c is the hypotenuse, which is 2. We could say a is x, and b is the missing side that we're looking for. So 2 squared is 4. And if we subtract both sides by x squared, we're going to have 4 minus x squared is equal to b squared. So the missing side b is going to be 4, the square root of 4 minus x squared. So we can put that here. Now, if sine theta is x divided by 2, what is tangent theta? Based on Sokotoa, tangent is opposite over adjacent. This is opposite, this is adjacent. So tangent will be x over the square root of 4 minus x squared. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. It's 1 over tangent. So if tangent is x divided by the square root of 4 minus x squared, cotangent is going to be the reciprocal of that fraction, so it's going to be the square root of 4 minus x squared over x. So now what about theta? What can we replace theta with? Now recall that sine theta is x divided by 2. So if we take the arc sine of both sides, what's going to happen? What is the arc sine of sine theta? Well, these two expressions will cancel. And so we could say that theta is the arc sine of x over 2. So we have negative theta, so it's going to be negative arc sine x divided by 2 and then plus c. So this is the final answer. So that's how you can find the indefinite integral using trig substitution. Now let's work on finding the integral of x cubed divided by the square root of x squared plus 9. So we have the form x squared plus a squared, or you can write it as a squared plus x squared. 5 plus 3 and 3 plus 5 is the same. So what should we replace x with if we see this particular form? In this case, we need to use the expression x is equal to a tangent theta. So a squared is the same as 9. So if a squared is equal to 9, that means a is equal to 3, which means we should replace x with 3 tangent theta. So let's go ahead and do that. Now let's calculate dx. The derivative of tangent is secant squared, 
So dx is going to be 3 secant squared theta d theta. So on top, we can replace x cubed with 3 tangent theta raised to the third power. And then x squared is going to be 3 tangent theta squared plus 9. And so dx is 3 secant squared theta d theta. Now, 3 to the third power is 27. So on top, we have 27 tangent cubed. And on the bottom, 3 squared is 9. So we're going to have the square root of 9 tangent squared theta plus 9. And then we still have 3 secant squared theta d theta. Now, in the denominator, inside the square root, let's take out a 9. So we're going to have the square root of 9, and then after we factor out the GCF, we're going to be left over with tangent squared plus 1. Now everything else, I'm just going to leave it the way it is for now. Now, if you recall, 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared, and the square root of 9 is 3. So we now have this expression. So now at this point, we can cancel 3. And the square root of secant squared is secant. So this is what we now have. 27 tangent cubed times secant squared theta d theta divided by secant. So now at this point, we could cancel a secant. And so now we're left with the integral of 27 tangent cubed secant theta. So what can we do to integrate this expression? What we have here is a trigonometric integral. And instead of writing tangent cube, I'm going to replace it with tangent theta times, actually tangent squared theta times tangent theta. Let's write it like that. Now we need to perform another substitution, particularly u substitution at this point. So I'm going to make u equal to tangent theta. And the reason why I want to do that is so that du will be, actually, no, that's not going to work. du will be secant squared. I need to change it up a bit. Let's replace tan squared with secant squared minus 1. Because 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. Now, in this format, we can replace u with secant theta. So that du, the derivative of secant, will be secant tangent. So it's going to be secant tangent theta d theta. So I can replace secant with u. So let me get rid of this first. And so now this is going to be 27 integral of u squared minus 1, and then tangent secant d theta is the same as du. So this becomes du. You can see that here. These two expressions are exactly the same. Now the antiderivative of u squared, that's going to be u to the third power divided by 3. And the antiderivative of 1 is simply u. And keep in mind, we said u is equal to secant. So what we now have is 27 times secant to the third power divided by 3 minus secant theta. And let's not forget plus c. So we could simplify that. 27 divided by 3 is 9. So we have 9 secant to the third power. 
And then if we distribute the 27, that's going to be minus 27 times secant theta plus c. Now the last thing we need to do is convert that expression, replace theta with x somehow. Now the first substitution that we made was that x is equal to 3 tangent theta. Dividing both sides by 3, x over 3 is tangent. So now we can make our right triangle. So this is going to be theta, and here's the right angle. Now based on Sokotoa, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite to theta is x, and adjacent to it, right next to it, is 3. So now we've got to find a missing side. So using the Pythagorean theorem, c squared is a squared plus b squared. We could say a is 3, b is x. So c squared is going to be 9 plus x squared. And to solve for c, we've got to take the square root of both sides. So the third side of the triangle is the square root of 9 plus x squared. So now we can evaluate secant theta using a the triangle. But let's evaluate cosine, the reciprocal of secant. Now based on Sokotoa, cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is 3. So it's going to be 3 over the square root of 9 plus x squared. So secant theta, which is 1 divided by cosine, is the reciprocal of this fraction. That's going to be the square root of 9 plus x squared over 3. So now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take out 9 secant theta. I'm going to factor out that expression. So it's 9 secant theta times secant squared minus 3 plus c. Now let's replace secant with the square root of 9 plus x squared over 3. So secant squared, we're going to have to square this expression. And then that's going to be minus 3 plus c. So all we got to do is simplify what we now have. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. So we have a 3 in front and then square root 9 plus x squared. Now once we square the square root of 9 plus x squared, that will simply be 9 plus x squared. On the bottom we have 3 squared, so that's going to be 9, and then minus 3. Now let's get common denominators. So negative 3 or negative 3 over 1, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 3. And so inside the bracket I'm going to have 9 plus x squared divided by 9. Actually, I need to multiply top and bottom by 9 and not 3. What was I thinking? So it's going to be negative 3 times 9, which is negative 27, and then 1 times 9, that's going to be 9. I want to turn this into a single fraction. So I have 9 plus x squared minus 27 divided by 9 plus c. Now 3 over 9, that reduces to 1 third. So I can get rid of the fraction inside the bracket. So I have a 1 third outside, and then square root 9 plus x squared. And then 9 minus 27 is negative 18. So I have x squared minus 18 plus c. And so this is the final answer for this example.